John's excited because we're about to pimp my ride, his little trolley that he uses all around the yard to help me with. I mean, let's be honest, John's not a big kid, and so he uses mechanical advantage, and that's okay. That just means he's smarter than the average big guy. But you guys have asked for a long time, do I think that this unit, the Marex on is capable of running the welder. Now, I have my doubts on whether it could run a full 140 welder. Because a 140 welder, straight out right, will trip a 20 amp breaker the moment you accidentally fire up any other device on that line. But this smaller little Hitbox 200 MIG welder, I'm gonna bet it can probably do. So, John's had some modifications in mind on this thing for a long time. One of them is that constantly things slide sideways and end up in the wheels. So, we're thinking wheel arches like that. With the idea being making sure that a five gallon bucket can still sit right here. The other thing that we use this for quite often is transporting engines around the yard because it's tall enough that the engine shaft doesn't hit. And so we've got this right here that I have no idea where this came from, but I grabbed the plasma cutter and apparently I'm having monkey issues. There we go. I grabbed the plasma cutter and sliced it out so that we can put that there and then that way when we drop an engine on it and we got the wheel arches and everything should be able to fit in order to roll it around how's that for an upgrade we upgrade it all right we'll upgrade it and then you can paint it everybody argue what color you should paint it because the real reality is he's painting it whatever i have for leftover paint <laughs> so watch to the end in order to see what color Wait, you're supposed to do the dramatic YouTuber thing. Come on, do it. Why are you doing the clapping thing? That's not how this works. All right, time to cut the cord. So we've got this thing fully at 100%. So we've got it powered on. We're going to hold to start the AC. Now this thing has a big giant solenoid, you're going to hear click when it goes in. And I guess we'll choose any of them because they don't seem to be marked differently. Turn this thing on and see if it actually initializes. Okay, so we're on the big flux core, which is what it came with. We got it dialed about halfway, which is good for about eighth inch on this thing. And we ground out a nice spot for ground. And let's see if we can get this tacked into place. Yeah, that welded in and tacked in place just fine. We've got a little bit of a thicker amount of steel here, so I'm going to crank this way up to the max for no reason, other than just to see if it'll weld at max. If I burn a hole in it, it's junkyard stuff anyway. Uh-oh. Yeah, come over here. I hear beeping. That says OLP, Overload Protection. So it did not like this thing at max. Okay, what do we got to do to reset it, I wonder? 
Nope. Okay. Okay, so let's put this thing at, all right. Let's see if we can tick it off at like 75%. So, let's see if we can get this. Let's weld this in, because this is easy for John to film. Well, that one went okay. At this point, from here on out, the welder and unit never skip a beat and weld consistently through the next six minutes, which to you is about 25 seconds because I sped the whole thing up. But I wanted you to see that there's no cuts in the footage, that it just plain ran. Now, I did notice one thing while doing this. It does seem to be slightly slower for the initial arc, but once it's up and running, it's consistent. Here we go, John. Get some up close on those. It welded in really good. I'm impressed. Right. Hey, John. Can you do me a favor, and for the sake of the viewer, can you come over and watch the screen and see what kind of wattage it tries to pull while I run another bead. Okay, you want to watch this one. So I'm going to run about one inch of extra bead. And let's see what that puts out. So... While I'm welding, we should see the lower number there change. Man, that welds really good. I like that. About 18 inches worth of constant welding, line-wise, was 7%. So, that averages about a foot every 6% of battery life. It's really honestly not that bad. If you were welding up a trailer or something like that that broke, that's... It's a good farm excuse repair welder. It is not a permanent weld for a big repair, but it definitely would get you back home. What are you standing there for? Put it together. Okay. <laughs> Gee whiz. Got the hammer in place, got the pins there for you, and you're just standing there not doing anything. I see how you are. Beat on it like it owes you money. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, don't, 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 don't. We just painted that. Don't mess it up. Oh, yeah. oh you got it in now? Yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, pin pin. Here we go. See the classic spin it while using the spray paint can method. All right, hand me that. No, don't crumple it. We might have to make burgers later. Oh. I'm joking. I'm not making burgers out of spray paint tin foil. Jesse would kill me. There we go. Let's see, let's see what this new pimp my ride looks like out in the sun. I think that looks pretty good. What do you think? See, and we got that bar now so that you can put your heel on it and give it a shove when it's got something heavy. At least I got a mobile seat now. Oh, you got it. Oh, it's got a seat now because you won't hit the tires? 
Oh, there we go, that works. Hi. <laughs> 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 I think it came out pretty good. All right, say bye-bye.